Words are power. Words are how we understand the world around us and how we make sense of things. But words have power more than just in our prayers and our spells and the work that we do. The stories that we tell ourselves and tell others have power too. Let's talk about the power of words and stories as we walk together down creation's paths. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie. I am a christo pagan druid and a priest of Pritchett. Hello everyone, my name is Brian. I am a sous chef to the Dagda and a christo pagan. Th this is a topic that if I let myself go would be the entire podcast. Everything that we talked about would be this topic because this is really where my heart is. This is where I just want to dig in and dig deep because I am a storyteller at heart. And I do believe that there is a lot of magic in storytelling. There are other topics we need to talk about too. As we're going through this, if there's anything else you want to know, let us know in the comments because I, I would love to revisit this over and over and over again. This is There is so much to say, even just going off of various anecdotes, like there are so many stories about the power of telling of stories and how it shapes the way people think on individual and on large scale. Before we dig into this deeply, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on whatever app you're listening to us on. It helps us out a lot. And we do original Christo Pagan and Druid content on this channel five days a week, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss a thing. We got a lot of stuff coming up, including a very special episode Monday. So don't forget to check that out. All right. Storytelling and magic. We can go back to the basics. One of the themes of the Via Positiva, the way of bliss, the mystic's path, as I like to call it, is Devon. It is the word of God, the power of the spoken word. We see this throughout the Gospels, but it's most prevalent in the Gospel of John, which begins with those famous words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And through him, all things were made. And without him, nothing would have been made that was made. This is a powerful idea that does not originate in the Gospels. This is an idea that goes to both Plotinus, the Greek philosopher, and Philo of Alexandria, who was a Jewish philosopher, who first applied this idea to the Jewish faith. He had a character in his theology that he referred to as the Logos, the word, the discourse. That was a go-between between the unknowable God and the world. And much in the same way, Plotinus adds the same character to Plato's work. And then we see that getting brought into Christianity in the Gospel of John. As you know, I'm really big on knowing where things come from. Words have power. Word sounds have power. But speaking words has a lot of power. Yeah, we can say our mantras, our incantations, or whatever in our minds. And that does have a certain effect on us. Sometimes you're in a place where you can't say things out loud because you're in a tense situation and you don't want to amp it up by saying something that somebody else may not understand why you're saying it. So yeah, sometimes we have to keep it all inside, but there's something really powerful that happens through the act of saying, because our brains have to switch rails. We move from one side to the other from the thinking to the speaking and activate more of the matter in our brains, which helps things to actually set in better. There's an old adage that the best way to learn something is to teach it. And that's true because one, you have to do a lot of research and really understand the material in order to explain it to somebody else. But also there's something really powerful in saying it out loud, even if it's to your cats, to your dog, to your pet bird, to an empty room, saying it out loud really does help cement it into our minds. It is a powerful, powerful tool. You know, I like a lot of the woo woo spirit stuff. I think saying it out loud actually deals with a problem that we have. And that is, oh, I don't want to use this word, but I don't know a better word for it. Manifesting giant asterisk, not the kind of manifesting you're probably thinking about. A lot of the stuff that we're talking about is very internal or very otherworldly. We're talking about saints, angels, magical power, all of this stuff. When we say it out loud, 
for a lot of these ideas, concepts, what have you, it's the closest we can get to physically manifesting it. Because yeah, we can do statues and paintings and stuff like that. And if that's your form of art and storytelling, more power to you, that's awesome. Do that. It actually has similar effects on us. For most of us who don't feel comfortable sitting down and trying to paint an abstract painting of a mood, of a feeling, of a spiritual energy, being able to say it, to vocalize it, to go through that internal process of finding the words. See, this is why a lot of people work in journaling. And I think you should journal if you're on any kind of magical practice. One, so you don't forget stuff because our memory is not as good as we tend to believe it is. But also having to fit some of the experiences that we have into language helps us to explain it to ourselves and be able to think about it ourselves. See, most of the language that we use is like a hand pointing at the moon. It, it's just a way holder because we can't actually say the things that we want to say. We use the word God. It, it, it's a placeholder. It is a word sound that we use to express a lot of ideas, especially in English because it has to do double duty because we use it as like a, the God and the gods. Generally understanding to understand the definition of God it takes the stories that comes along with it. Exactly. And understanding those stories helps. And even in understanding which God the person's referring to when they say God. The reason I'm really trying to get you to start telling you stories, and I'm saying you because this is like in my bones, <laughs> and I think it's a practice that everybody can do, even if you're just memorizing and reciting other stories. You know, ha don't feel pressure that you have to write new stuff. If you can, do it is we are not logical, rational beings. I, I try to stress this over and over and over again. This is a great fallacy that entered our world during the enlightenment period. And it's not true. That's why I was thinking maybe we should shift our focus for a minute and look at memory and storytelling. Because we, we think we're rational beings. So we think our memory works like a computer file. The data is saved. We recall it. It's the same data every time we recall it because it is saved it is the same. That is wrong because we're not rational beings. Every time we, re we, we pull up the memory, we then pull up the story associated with that memory. We tell that story. And in retelling that story, the memory changes to the new story told. This is magic. We are reworking the subtle energies of our brain and how that data is stored in our head. And when we're done telling that story, that memory is saved over the old file to go back to the computer reference again, it is changed. It's like the video game magic book problem. We read the magic book and it goes poof, and that's us pulling out the memory. And now we have to write the book again, but we're not gonna write it exactly the same way every, every time, time we write it down. But every time we pull that book out and read it, it goes poof, and we have to write a new book and put it in our inventory, right? It's this weird cycle that we get in. And we start realizing that that's how your mind actually works. You start understanding that it's not the facts that motivate you. Facts are not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we just eschew facts and science and all of that, because I'm not. But if those facts are not contained in a story, they're not going to get into your process. They're not going to get into your way of thinking. They're not going to get into your life. They're just little bits of data in your brain that are free floating. Stories connect all of this together. And this is where the magic comes in. If you're having troubles with self-esteem, like I was having a lot of troubles with self-esteem. I grew up without it. And the way I worked at this was I got an Instagram account and did the dumb thing of, I published a self-portrait of every day for, I think two years. It was at least a year, every day. I didn't just take a picture of myself. I made a self-portrait of myself, which meant I had to load it up in either an app and do something with it. I had to load it up in an art program and do something, do something to it. I had to stare at my face. And you told a story for that day. Yes. Through the picture. Yes. I started associating myself with the things that I love. I started putting in various fandoms that I am a part of. I really played around with it and then wrote a little something on the caption that connected me to the picture. 
I was rewriting my self story, how I viewed myself and who I was. This is magic. This is the most basic magic we can do and some of the most important magic we could do. And it took time. It took a lot of time. And there's part of me that misses doing that. It was a lot of work. I would spend like two to three hours every night working on this picture of myself. It was meditative and it was very meaningful to me, but I don't do it anymore because I don't have the time and it did its job. I have the self-esteem to speak for myself now. I have the self-esteem to realize that I do matter, which believe it or not, I, I didn't for a very long time. My backstory is something for a Victorian melodrama, but oh, that's magic. That was me retelling my story over and over again in different ways, but always connecting it to things that I love. And I was always honest. If I was depressed, if I was having a bad day, that was part of the story because that was true to who I was, but it was about focusing myself and understanding how that is a part of me and not another reason to give into the omni. It was a really interesting experience for me to go through, but that's magic. Magic is the alteration and application of subtle energies through our actions and activities to bring about change. That's what magic is. I've had to do this with my own worldview a couple times, as I've said, I believe on this podcast several times. I was raised very conservative, evangelical Baptist, and I am not that anymore, which I think is very self-evident given the content that I've been doing. But that required telling new stories that required crafting this new self, not just self-image. So that was a part of it because it was that upbringing that really helped me to build this, I mean, nothing, low self-esteem identity as part of my deconstruction process. But we get stuck on the deconstruction part and we forget to reconstruct at the end. Yet once you take everything apart, you sort through it and you find out what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of and what new things need to be added in and you build the new thing and you put it out. I've done that with my worldview. I have done that with my own sense of self. I have done that with just helping to motivate me to get through certain problems. This is one of the big powers, possibilities, and problems that go into the prosperity preaching. Yes. That both on the religious side and prosperity selling, even on the magic side, and then through a lot of the aspects, because they construct a story that you want to buy into. Some of them don't even know they're constructing a story, and that's the problem. That's where you yeah. get lost in it. Yeah. That's why... Again, as somebody who practices magic, we are very conscious of the fact that we are telling a story. My self-image is not who I am because I am so much more than I can put into words. You are so much more than you can put into words, but I am conscious of that. And so every time I discover a new part of myself that I want to make sure that I am doing something with, I add it to the story. It gets added in. Every time I discover something about the world that is awe-inspiring and amazing because that's happening so much nowadays. We're always focused on like the bad news, but there's so much just scientific discoveries and things that people are doing to make the world a better place and taking those stories and putting them into ourselves and weaving them into our story. Because that's the thing is you have to really be careful to make sure that you're constructing the, the story that you want. It's like, the, like I was saying with the prosperity ones, that's, that's some of the pro problems in that is they don't put in ethical gain. There's no constraints on how stuff is gained. That's where you get some of those uh, scarier slash sadder stories where somebody does prosperity spell work and they come into a windfall of money because a family member died and they got an inheritance and they didn't want the family member dead. <laughs> they may or may not have been directly the result of it, but now their story becomes... I did this spell recklessly and killed a family member and I have money. And it's like, yeah, first you got to make sure you're putting in ethical s standards in there that you're comfortable living with. And also with those stories, you got to define accurately what prosperity is. Okay. Accuracy. This is very important on two ways, not just what you want to have as the end result, but oh, how to talk about this. I like to start with as a D and D player. This is when the GM comes to you and you ran into the genie and you get to make your wishes. Or even not as a DD player, this is generally anybody familiar with the genie stories and making the, the three wishes. And remember that tale. Once again, this is the power of the story. 
and the, and where the magic is in the story because it is a cautionary tale of accuracy. You also need to be honest. Hmm. This is something that I think a lot of people, especially who are getting started with magic, get confused about. I, I practice a form of Irish paganry. Part of that is from time to time when I really want to do a working, I will write a Ross. If you want to look that up, R-O-S-C. Powerful kind of poetry, powerful kind of magic and incantation. You really should take some classes on it. There's a wonderful class at the Irish Pagan School that I highly recommend. We're not affiliated, but I would love to get to know them. Anyway, <laughs> in a Rosk, you speak in the first person and in the present tense. So is now. If you're writing a Rosk for wealth or prosperity, you would say, I am wealth. And that might hit your brain weird, okay? Because I just said you need to be honest. Yes, you need to be honest and remember the purpose of the speech that you're giving. A Ross is a statement of power. You are wealthy. You have friends, family. You have, even if it's chosen family, you have the things that are around you. You have this power at your disposal. I am. But you have to be very careful with that because if dishonesty starts creeping in, you are going to corrupt the working. Because now we start using analogies. We start using metaphors and they're concrete analogies. So I wouldn't just say I am wealthy, but now what am I going to say? Well, if you say I am Scrooge McDuck levels of wealthy, oh, I don't want to be a miser, penny pinching. No, no. Always obsessed with my money and where it's coming from. No, no, that's, that's not the image I want to put in my mind. This is that both accuracy that Brian was talking about and also being honest. If you have a weakness, if you have an issue, like if you have a problem with gambling, make sure that whatever you're doing excludes gambling as a possibility. I am wealthy. I am not a gambler. I take the sure path. This is why in the Buddhist practice version of storytelling as magic, you associate yourself with the enlightened being. Yes. And that enlightened being has their own story that basically comes with all of the caveats and clauses and specificity needed because you, you learn the story of Siddhartha and, and the story itself is structured in a way to include everything that you need for all those elements and for that accuracy. And then you sit and you repeat the story and the story is you are this person. And the reason I picked wealth because I think it's something that a lot of people think about. I want wealth. Yeah. I want prosperity. Is that really what you want? This is honesty. This is honesty. It's, it's so important. You need to dig into that because I want a comfortable living. I, w I want to not have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These are the things that I actually want. Money may be the means for me to achieve some of that or a certain level of prosperity or whatnot, but it's not the goal. So if you're doing money magic and constantly asking for money, you're going to lose out on a lot of possibilities. When we moved cross country, 1989, we moved from Frederick, Maryland to Oakland, California. Well, we didn't know it was going to be Oakland yet. We moved to California out in the East, the East Bay. We did all of our magic before we left. And what we asked for is a welcoming phone and all that we would need to get set up there. So the path would be made smooth and clear. And Brian happened to meet a woman in training whose mother had an apartment that was open for rent that we went and checked out. It was in a sketchy neighborhood, but it was a nice apartment. We got to meet our neighbors. They were really nice people. And the, that, rent was and the rent cheap. was super cheap, especially, especially from, from the area. Yeah. So we, we talked, we decided, yeah, that's the place we're going to move into. We moved into that, that apartment, knock on the door. Like as we're moving stuff into the house, knock on the door. Oh, it's our neighbors. Oh, we just replaced our entire living room set. It's coming today. Would you like our old furniture? Mind you, our move was what we could pack into a car. It was a sports vehicle yes. with a car top carrier. So that's we, it. That was it. Like we, we literally unpacked the car and piled it in a little pile in the middle of the living room. We were pretty much sitting on the floor. Well, for a short, very short while. Yeah. Immediately. And then, like and immediately upon. Well, yes, we would. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Do you want anything for that? No, no, we just, we'd just be throwing it away. Sure. And all of a sudden we had a chair, two chairs and a couch come into the house and a table for, they also gave us a living room table. Immediately we had 
okay. A little bit later, as we're trying to figure out where to put the furniture, knock on the door. I know moving can be really, really hard, so I made up a casserole for you all. I hope do you? I hope you don't have any dietary restrictions. I should have asked beforehand. Would you like? And I think it was a lasagna, which at the time we were both like, "Yes, that's like our favorite." Like, hey, here you go. Just when you're done with it, knock on the door. Give me the give me the 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 fan back. So there we are, first day in the house. We have fur furnishings. We have meal was covered. Meal was covered. All of the stresses of moving into a new place were covered because we asked for what we actually wanted, a smooth move. The company that you were working for at the time put us up at a nice hotel that we got to stay at while you were in training and while we were looking for a place to live that went smoothly. We easily found an apartment to move into. The magic cleared the way, which is what I always say. Magic does. Magic clears the way. But we asked for what we wanted. We didn't ask for a nice house or a nice apartment or a specific area or reef regions. Now you can, but just remember, you're putting limiters on the work that you're putting out into the universe. But we were honest. We were going through a lot of things in Maryland and we just wanted a fresh new start in, in a place where we could feel comfortable. Even though we were living in kind of a sketchy part of town, I'm not gonna lie, we had a great time there. I have very fond memories of living in that little apartment. I say little, we went to visit some of our friends out there and our how our apartment was a palace compared to theirs. And it was so much cheaper than what they were paying in rent. But that's because we were honest. Don't just ask for wealth. Don't just ask for money. What do you want? What do you really want? What is the story that you need, need to tell to get you where you want to go? Don't say, I'm looking for love. Get a cat. There are loving cats. Get a dog. Yeah. A dog will give you unconditional love every day. Don't ask for a lover. Lovers are not necessarily romantic. Don't ask just for romance because romance is not necessarily into the naughties. There's a lot of, what do you want? You have to tell the story and tell it in the way that will get you to where you're wanting to go. That's not just about accuracy and hitting that point, but be honest because it's easy for us to miss the forest for the trees. Yeah, money will help a lot of us out. But so will people coming in and just randomly dropping stuff off at your house. Because we could have asked to be able to afford new furnishings when we got there. Because we knew we were leaving all of our furniture behind. But we just asked for a smooth transition and an easy setup in our new pl place of living. And that's what we got. What do you really want? What is the story th that you need to be telling yourself? What are the stories you need to be telling yourselves? About your day-to-day -day life? About your work life? About your home life? Be very mindful. Anytime you are sitting there working through something very strongly in your mind that is a form of magic it's a weak form of magic magic gains strength through intention and focus don't think that i'm saying that your intrusive thoughts or any other abstract momentary desires or fears are going to truly go out in the world and curse you not what i'm saying at all what i'm saying is very often when we are doing a working we don't actually focus it on the thing we really want and or need. Once again, it's about being careful what stories we are telling and how we're going to craft those stories. One of the simplest forms of magic that affects our lives on a regular daily basis is when we're in conversation, just polite conversation with someone, and they ask, as we used to lovingly call them, one of the dreaded questions. Like, when I was younger, I would always get asked, what do you want to do with your life? And this is a legit question. It's a, it's a friendly question. The thing is you need to be honest with the answer. And honestly, if you're being responsible with your magic working, you're going to craft a story for that response. Yeah. And that's the one you're going to give over and over again because that is what you're going to help actualize in your life. The analogy we like to use when talking about magic is magic is like water. The actions that we take, the spell work, the prayer work, the ritual work that we do is about wearing paths into the universe so that the magic can flow where we want it to flow. Remembering that it's working those subtle energies. So those subtle energies can be the more woo-woo energies of magic, but also your neural energy yeah. is the subtle energy. Yes. And you're carving those paths in your neural pathways. You will, on an unconscious level, manifest things and make choices without even realizing you're making certain choices. Self-fulfilling prophecies are real, and, and the stories that we tell ourselves can affect our self-image and self-worth. They can affect our worldview. 
They can affect how we treat others and how we live just generally. This is one of those places where very literally garbage in, garbage out. If you're not putting good thoughts into practice, if you're not putting good work into practice, don't expect great results. But don't worry about it. You can always improve. Like we like to say, I feel like this is going to be said on every episode for a while. Better is better. Better is better. So don't, don't sweat it. Don't think you have to be perfect right off the gate, right out the box. You can always improve. You can always make it better. You can always fix and tweak as you go along. But if you don't start the work, it's never going to get finished. Tell some stories. Tell them to yourself. Tell them to your dog. My dog loves story time. This is a perfect time of year for it. Yeah. I started working on a story last year around selling. And then through the darker time of the year, I spent a lot of time adjusting that story and accepting the terms that were going to come with that story. It took me probably six months to get comfortable with accepting some of the major changes that were going to have to happen in my life for that story to actually come true, for it to fully manifest. And that's the thing. I started the process and then spent time reflecting on it and accepting it and coming to terms with it and changing and adjusting the story as well. And a year later, I'm much happier. I am much more prosperous than I was last year. Let me know. What stories are you telling yourself? What stories do you feel like you need right now? What stories do you need to cut out? I am working on that one a lot right now. A lot of stories I just need to stop telling myself and others. Let me know down in the comments. If you're listening to us on YouTube or Spotify, you can leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else, even if it says you can leave us a comment, they don't let us know. So you can leave a comment there because engagement is magic. But head on over to creationspast.com, click chat, and you can leave us a comment there and we will get to see it and be able to respond while you're there if you have a few dollars you can pass our way you can think about joining a membership or you can support us on Kofi or patreon i am ce dorset on both thank you so very very much and since i invoked him last time i feel like it's appropriate to invoke him again today oh blessed saint michael archangel of compassion teach us to love ourselves and to love the world that we live in and help us with your great sword that cuts between truth and lies to find the honesty and the integrity to tell the stories that we need to tell. Amen. Amen. Amen.